Hi guys, it's Elena, and I'm enchanted to have you be here on my channel. Hello and welcome! I'm glad you're here. If you're new, consider liking, subscribing, becoming part of my little YouTube family. And if you've been here before, hello and welcome back! As you can see here, I'm kind of getting into the moment of doing my journaling or how should I put it, setting up my bullet journal for the month of October. And I'm super excited because October is spooky season! Well, to be honest, every season is kind of spooky season for me. But October especially, I just love the energies around it and all those fun things like that. So I'm starting off with printing out a picture for the month of September. And I like to do this, I like to pick my favorite picture, either something I took outside of my pets or any other thing, just to kind of keep it as a memory. As you can see behind on the other side of the pages, I have already a couple months posted and I'm just loving flipping back to this spread and seeing all those pictures. So cute. It just makes me so, so wonderfully happy. The little pocket printer that I have will be linked down in the description if you want to get your own and print your own awesome little goodies for your journal. Alright, so on to October. As I've been doing the past couple of months, I like to set up a specific color theme for the month and just kind of have all the weekly spreads follow that theme. I also started doing that on my Instagram and having my Instagram follow that color scheme theme for the month. I've only been doing it for the past two months and it's actually coming out pretty cool looking if I must say so myself. So here's my Instagram if you want to check it out and see all those colors that I chose. It makes it a little bit more difficult I say just than to just put pictures up there. I actually have to get a little bit creative to add in those specific color elements. So it just makes it a little bit more fun and adds some interesting schemes or themes to my, um, my Instagram spread. Now, for this month, instead of doing the usual circle that I do for the decoration of the month name, I decided to do a pumpkin, which of course is again a reference to the spooky season, the spooky time for Halloween, Samhain, however you celebrate it. painting in those colors, giving it a couple sprays across the pages. I know it doesn't translate on camera very well from this angle, but it definitely gives it a little bit more texture rather than just the blank pages before. The also reoccurring theme throughout this month is that copper pen. I've done a couple paintings with it and I've just been kind of obsessing with the shininess, the sparkliness of the metallic sheen on that paper. On the metallic sheen of that pen. I have a very simple monthly overview spread here and on the right side I'm putting in the month date so I can put in any important dates, information, appointments, class schedules, and homeworks, and essays, and assignments that are due. <laughs> So I'm just finishing up that pumpkin, adding in some final details, and I want to know how are you guys doing? Are you in school or college, university, anything like that? How's this crazy year been treating you? Hopefully you and yours are safe and everything is going well. You're just at home a little bit more frequently. The biggest change for me throughout staying at home is like I'm a homebody person anyways, but the biggest change I would say is that I can't go to Walmart here at like midnight because they close really early and for some reason I'm at home during the day and as soon as it gets like dark and night out, that's when I'm most active. Maybe I'm like a bat or an owl, m something like that. I'm not necessarily like the most creative at that time, although I do have a lot of creativity, but that's, that's the time that I choose to leave my house. And now since everything closes around seven or eight, it makes it really difficult on me. <laughs> so now I actually have to go outside when the sun is up. I mean, come on, what's up with that? <laughs>
The quote that I chose for this month is, Autumn is a second spring where every leaf is a flower by Albert Camus, I believe. Now, I absolutely adore, adore, adore this quote because I live in New England where the chee- cheese, where the trees change colors and leaves go from yellow to reds to dark purples and magentas and browns, and it's just a stunning and beautiful time of the year here, just like spring is. So I, I absolutely love the idea and the concept behind leaves kind of being like fall flowers. I don't know, what do you think about that? And this spread that I'm working on as well has also been kind of a reoccurring theme throughout the past month is a spot where I put down what I'm grateful for. And I usually do 30 or 31 spots, corresponding to the days of the month, of course, and I put in something I'm thankful for, be it something as simple as I'm thankful for all you guys that are here and supporting me and hanging out with me and liking and subscribing to my videos, or be it be a little bit more complex and something dealing with schoolwork, my mental health, my health in general, and things like that. So instead of coloring it in with a marker, I wanted to do a very washed out kind of gray scale type of thing with the watercolor paint. That way it gives it some interesting like watery textures and it kind of gives it more color on the page without it being overwhelming and it's still right on it. So I guess I have a ton of reasonings for that one. Do you guys take time out of your day to be grateful to write down something that you're thankful for or something good that's happened. I feel like that's very important for mental health and, and happiness and just overall your existence to take some time out of your day and just be thankful and grateful for the things that you have now. I mean, if you think about it a couple years back, you probably have things today that you wanted a couple weeks, months, years back. And isn't that just something already to be thankful for? I just, I just think it's very important way to kind of practice self-care and to kind of ground yourself in the moment. So with that being said, let me know down in the comments, what are you thankful for? On the other side, I usually do a habit tracker, but to be honest, <laughs> I've been absolutely terrible of keeping up with my habit tracker. It's not that I don't do the habits, it's just that I... It's just that I don't mark the habits as being done. And then I have to go back and remember what I did and when I did it, etc, etc. Not, not the greatest spread for me, so I decided to switch things up and practice another sort of self-love or self-care type of spread where I'm going to put down one line a day of I am statements. For instance, I am strong or I am smart and that type of thing. Something that's going to hopefully empower me for the start of the day. And I'll let you know next month how that goes. I also apologize about any background noise. My puppy has been walking around and asking for treats even though I just gave her a ton so that she'll be quiet but she knows she knows when I'm doing a voiceover that I want her to you know not make a lot of noise and that I give her treats something to keep her busy with so so she got smart <laughs> and now she's using my voiceover time or my YouTube video time to mooch as many treats out of me as possible sneaky little puppy The first spread of this month was definitely inspired by one of the sticky sheets I received for my Sticky Club subscription. I have a whole playlist of a ton of Sticky Club stationery stuff. If you want to check it out, I'll link it up at the top. It's going to pop out right around here. And I was just completely enthralled and enchanted with the design of this like abstract whales and outer space and like galaxy things and it's all triangular E or geometric E ho however to put it with some gold and copper accents and it was just so so pretty so this whole entire weekly spread was direct inspiration from those stickers and as soon as i start adding those stickers on you'll definitely see what i'm talking about
it really really helped that those stickers fit completely into my color scheme for this month and I was very happy that that inspiration kind of didn't go to waste. I'm also outlining those black squiggly outlines with a copper pen, again just to give it more detail, more shine, more shimmeriness so to speak. It doesn't translate really well on camera but it's a metallic -y marker and it just fits with the theme of like the abstract geometric space whales <laughs> however to put it and you just figured it would be such a great way to kind of add in more details onto the spread now i was asked previously why do i do my setups kind of like a whole month in one go well because it takes a lot of time to kind of set everything up and, and get in the zone of creativity and in the mood to kind of do this so I, I don't want to set it, spread it out by doing it every week even though it might be a little bit easier time wise initially I just feel like it's easier or simpler for me to just get all of those days done at once and I have a whole month spread ready to just be used for the rest of the month. I even try to do it a little earlier for the future months, that way I can write in the dates, but that doesn't always happen because I procrastinate like crazy, unfortunately. But that's kind of one of the reasonings why I like to do the whole entire month in one go. That way I get to stick with the same theme. Um, I'd say my handwriting doesn't really change because my handwriting changes throughout the month and different days and I, I'm not entirely sure what the reasoning behind that is. So I kind of just like everything to be coercive and complete and just be done and over with this month. Just fill in the important dates and, and that will be it. So as you can see, those stickers are so perfect for this month's spread. They're kind of like astrologically and, and witchy a little bit and dark and mysterious and abstract and just stunning and pretty and beautiful and I just love them so much so I ended up using them exactly for this spread. Now what I also like to do with my sticker sheets is there are sometimes stickers printed on them that aren't cut or cut out and I like to go in with either scissors or with like a hole puncher thing to kind of get the most use out of my sticker sheets. Let me know if you guys do that too because I feel like it's, it, it's, it's pretty, it's printed. Why not just cut it so it could be used as a sticker? Anyways, I tend to mutilate the whole entire sticker sheet so I can get all the stickers off of there as possible. I think this is one of my favorite spreads for this month. I just love kind of like the weirdness of it and the different shapes for the places to put your notes in. I'm not entirely sure what those are called. And I had such a difficult time this month to put in the proper dates. I kept messing up and then I kept messing up again and I had to keep crossing things out and redoing them. And then at the end when I started putting in dates and things like that, I had to redo all of them anyways. <laughs> So don't pay attention to the date numbers, just just keep in mind the aesthetic of the week itself. Just look how pretty, pretty, pretty that weekly spread is. Alright, on to the next one. Again, this was kind of inspired by Sticky Club subscription pack. Again, they're kind of like birds, washi tape sheet thingy mabobber however to describe it, but I also wanted to do something similar already since I had a couple um, stickers before of birds and black and white type of things. So I figured making a very bird-centered, I'll call them crows, let's call them crows since we're doing, you know, spooky and Halloween, but I had an idea of doing a very bird-centered spread, so if you have a phobia of, like, lots of birds and feathers, maybe skip to the next spread, because this is gonna get a ton of winged friends all across the pages.
this whole month i have been really drawn to working with feathers and birds pretty much i'm not entirely sure what the reasoning behind that is i even set up a pen pal spread full of bird like things so this whole month well not october september was the month that i was really interested in kind of like feathers and i guess the element air and that's what i've been working on or working with the most this month i'm not entirely sure what the reasoning behind that is it just felt right that that was kind of september for me have you been working on anything interesting or specific throughout september um, if you practice, that is. I mean, you don't have to answer. I mean, homework could be something you've been working on throughout this month, which reminds me, I, I think I have an assignment due tonight. Maybe? I'll have to check my planner because I don't remember. I love those circular, iridescent, kind of holographic stickers. I think they're just so so pretty like initially they're very black and white and dark and moody but as soon as the light hits them they have that beautiful rainbow-esque shimmer over them and i just find that so pretty it's such a delightful contrast to those stickers themselves and then to the whole entire page themselves as i mentioned i've had other bird like sticker sheets and this was one of them and i love how tiny and like not very detailed they are but they just weren't fitting my theme exactly. I mean, there's like nothing blue on my page. So I went over with a Sharpie on the blue birdies that won't be matching my page and I colored them in. It worked way better than I expected. I was so, so, so very delighted that they came out awesome and they even still had a sparkly and shimmery finish to them even after I put Sharpie all over them. I gotta say, that was pretty cool and I was pretty happy with the outcome that I got to put birds all over the pages. Alright, now on to a bit of a tedious part for this spread, where I take it little bird by little bird by little bird and stick them, stick them all across my pages. I'll try to save you the annoyance and frustrations of watching me do all of it in real time and I skip through it a little bit just to kind of move things along and speed things along, but I definitely loved the grayscale of the way that the birdies came out. ended up coloring those black with that sharpie marker and the other ones were gray and white so i feel like that kind of really encompassed all of the pages and i got it to where i wanted it to be full of birds and feathery friends One of the other questions I get asked at times is why do I use tweezers on my stickers? Well, one of the best answers I have for you is that I have long nails and it sometimes makes it difficult to either pick up the stickers or to move the stickers around. And just using the tweezer just makes it so much quicker and faster and easier. And I guess that's just kind of my little quirk when I do some journaling stuff. Also, I'm a dental assistant and those are actually cotton plier tweezers as in dental supplies. So I was already used to using them for a while and it just kind of matched the artsy part of me as well. Again, don't pay too close of an attention to the dates for this month because I was very wrong on them and that was the biggest mistake I did in this spread or not even in this specific spread, but in this whole entire month, I was just off on all the dates. But here it is in its glittery glory.
Now, in this spread, I had a vision of kind of doing a different, like, abstract way of outlining the weekly or the daily things. And then I completely, completely messed up. That coppery pen has a tendency to spill, so I omitted the ruler altogether to kind of avoid some of the spills, because if you push too hard, it kind of, like, pools out paint, which sucks, and it just doesn't come off. But... I guess it kind of added to the aesthetic a little bit. So for this weekly spread, I had a vision of doing like a dark academia type of thing or like a dark library, gothic library, that type of spread or theme. And I'm not sure how well it came out. Maybe it was the shape of like the days that I did or maybe it was the layout of the stickers or the color choices. I wasn't too happy with the way that these, that, that, that this week came out. It's not one of my favorite weeks, but it, it's not too bad. I have done worse before. <laughs> and I'm glad that spotched paint mistake was easily covered up with stickers. I mean, come on, stickers fix pretty much anything. Uh, mistakes in your journals, sure. Mistakes in your planner, of course. Mistakes in your notes for school? Yep, stickers can fix that. The big dark void in my heart and soul? Stickers kind of patch that up as well. <laughs> I like doing that similar kind of theme with the washi tapes throughout the monthly spread. I feel like it kind of tied in the weeks even though they were very different themes I suppose and just kind of combined the weeks together through the month not just with the color scheme but kind of like that little bit piece of aesthetic. So that's kind of why I ended up adding them throughout majority of the weekly spreads. Now for that books. Again, a sticky club, a subscription pack, tons of wonderful little gothic -y library things. And I just, I, I'm not a super big fan of this spread. I don't know. Let me know what you think down in the comments. Maybe you have a suggestion of what I could have done a little bit better to make it more library looking like. Maybe I should have turned the dailies into maybe like a book or something. I don't know. Something to think about for next time I do a spread. Now, with that being said, what color scheme should I do for November? Let me know down in the comments if you want to see anything specific or particular. I have a feeling I'm going to do purple, possibly because November is my birthday and purple is my favorite color. So maybe I'll just, maybe, maybe I'll just do purple. Yeah, let's go with purple. So a little sneak peek or sneak thought for you for what November might be looking like. So the weekly spread before had birds, this one has bats. Again, it's spooked over, isn't it? So we kind of have the crows and the bats and the gothiciness and the dark and spookiness going on. So what I'm putting in now is some washi tape to mark the days of the week. Like I said before, don't pay attention too close to the numbers corresponding with that date. But I decided to write in the days in like that coppery pen or the black washi thing. And it came out a little bit better off camera than on camera. So here's what the spread looks like. It has some coppery glittery tones to it. And I don't know. It's an okay spread. All right, on to the fourth spread for the week. For the week. On to the fourth spread for the month, because, you know, week four and that type of thing. And I wanted to do a very blacked out almost 
weekly spread or something like that and kind of do like a starry night or a starry sky but a little bit more abstract to this so here i am just painting in all the pages um like a layered black i didn't want to make it too black black so it's a little bit of a gray scale of black if i'm <laughs> making sense that way it looks a little streaky a little abstract and a little artsy so that, that's kind of what I was going for. I connected all of the dailies, that way I don't have to go in between the fine lines, because I've done that before in past spreads and it's just very, very annoying and I don't want to do it anymore. <laughs> so I kind of did a cheat way around this way and just connected the dailies together, that way I don't have to paint around it. I'm, I am a little bit lazy when it comes to doing my journals and spreads. It might seem kind of creative to you, but to me, this is quick and kind of lazy. <laughs> After like the first three weeks are done, the fourth and sometimes fifth week, I just, I just want to be over with it. Alright, so here's what that looks like. I did more of those paint splatters across the pages, just add a little bit of texture. After the paint is dried, I went and outlined the dailies a little bit more. I feel like this spread came out a little bit dark and spooky and I really enjoy that. Afterwards, I went over with my Calero paint or watercolor paint in that very light gold. So it has a little bit of warmth to it, but it's not too warm and too coppery looking. And I did some stars all the way around it, little dots and dabs to give it some variation. And my goodness, does this paint get spooky? sparkly when it's dry. Oh, I love it. I love, love, love that color palette. It's just super pretty, super shimmery. It's like you're painting with liquid metals. It's just amazing. I can't rave enough about it. Then I did the sprayed paint splatter technique all the way across the pages to add some more details and stars and starriness and I painted in little astrological signs like tiny planets, little moons, stars, etc, etc. Now all of the items that I'm using, if I have an Amazon link to it, I will link it down below in the description if you want to check it out or if you want to recreate any of your spreads. And if I inspired you to do any particular spread in your journal, definitely tag me in it, post it on Instagram. I would love to see your creations and I would absolutely love to see what your journal looks like. I mean, we can inspire each other, right? So I just painted little stars, little details everywhere just to give it a little bit more dimension throughout kind of the weekly spread so it's not too grayscale and has enough shimmery and shininess. Now speaking of shimmery and shininess, I decided to use golden letters to mark out the weeks and instead of doing out the whole letter name, I just did the first letter of the week that way I don't take up too much of the space in my journal and I feel like I found the proper color gold that light gold that matches with the Calero paints so I guess it ties in quite well I don't know in my opinion at least and the letter N is not for a new day of the week that just stands for notes <laughs> Alright, so here's what it looks like. I promise you it's a lot more shimmery in person. The camera just doesn't pick up glitter and iridescence the way that the human eye does. And it's just, I, it's one of my favorite spreads, I suppose. It was simple, cute, 
quick and it covered most of the page. Alright, on to the last weekly spread of this spooktacular month. <laughs> Please don't leave. I, I make terrible puns on occasion and hopefully it gets a giggle or two out of you. But this last week contains Samhain, which I celebrate, or Halloween, or All Hallows Eve, however you want to put it, or decide calling it. I'm not sure. I mean, it's just spooky stuff and candy and deliciousness, right? Mainly. <laughs> so that I kind of wanted to be all around spooky-ish, or like a modern type of Halloween style design, very inspired by sticky stickers again. Normally I have more variants throughout my journal rather than just sticky club stickers, but they just sent like the perfect pack for what I had visioned for this month. And we got some little spooky cute adorable witches and we got some little spooky cute adorable kitties and well, I'm just gonna cover all the pages with those two sticker sheets and make them look as pretty as possible. I love how cute those little witches are. Oh my goodness. I, they, they're, they're, they're riding on a bicycle, they're reading a book, they're making a potion, they're chewing bubblegum. It's just so cute. I mean, granted, they were part of the cute pack from Sticky Club, but still, just look how cute they are. I then use the same coppery marker to write in the days of the week. I feel like that was an overall theme throughout this month. And writing them out like that, I feel like it just gave it a little bit more smoothness across. I'm not sure. I really like the way that this weekly spread came out. It's, it's one of my favorites as well, so it's between this one and like that first Wales one. Let me know down in the comments which spread was your favorite which spread was your least favorite, and if you have any recommendations for weekly spreads. I promise not to bore you too much with all the sticker sticking, so I skipped through a couple and just kind of gave you the main idea behind me putting in a ton of stickers throughout the pages. That way you get to see the main result and kind of get an experience of my struggle with how many stickers I put in. <laughs> so like I mentioned before, I tend to end up mutil mutilating some of my sticker sheets because it has the printed sticker picture without it being cut out. And if it's small enough, I use the little hole puncher so I can create kind of my own little sticker. And if not, I use scissors. All right, so here are all the cute little witches in this witchy little spread for Spooktober and Halloween. They have a little bit of a coppery shimmer to them. Okay, on to the last spread that I do in the month, and that is a running to-do list. So I have a monthly running task list of all the things that I need to do. Um, usually I show either one or two of the pages that I create, but I end up adding a ton more at the end because, oh, I'm a busy person <laughs> and there's a lot of stuff that I need to do. So here's one of them, what it looks like, and I really like it. I feel like it helps me stay organized and I get to see all the things that I need to do at once. All right, once I flipped back to the start of this month, I realized that I didn't label October on the pumpkin. I was just too happy with the way the pumpkin was. So I took a scrap piece of that like parchment or paper bag type of paper, ripped it up a little bit on the edges to give it a little like artsy aesthetic, I suppose. And that became the title for October. Alright, so here it is, 
all of the weeks in their wonderful glory. Again, let me know which one was your favorite. Don't forget to like and subscribe, and I will see you all on my next video. Bye!